Let's talk about text modifiers. In addition to text styles, text modifiers allow us to animate our text runs. Let's start by adding a text modifier. To add a text modifier, we need to go to the inspector, find the text modifiers panel, and hit the plus button. At this point, our modifier isn't doing anything. But if we hit this plus button to the right of the name, you'll see that we have a lot of options for different properties that we want to modify. In this case, we have access to opacity, origin, position, rotation, and scale. In addition to these, because our font is also a variable font, we can also animate the different variables like weight and slant. To keep things simple, I'll just go and select position. Now our text modifier can modify the position of our text run. So when I adjust the Y position, you can see that the text adjusts in the Y direction. And same thing when I adjust the X. To keep things simple, I'm just gonna adjust the Y property slightly. And now we can talk about what the range does. Right now you can see that our text modifier is modifying the entire text run. The range allows us to adjust how much of the run is actually being affected by the modifier. These top two numerical values move our range in. And as you can see, as the letters fall outside of the range, they get reset back to the original position. We can also do that from the right side. Once again, as the letters fall out of the range, they go back to the baseline. These next two numerical fields allow us to adjust the fall off. As we begin adjusting the values, you can see that we're almost creating a gradient with our position effect. The farther the letter is from this dark blue section, the closer to the baseline it is, or the less that the modifier is actually taking effect. The last thing that we can adjust is the offset, and the offset allows us to move our range up and down the text run. So as you can see, when I move the offset, you can see that the text range is moving along the text run. So this is a good way to create sort of a bouncing animation for our letters. Now we can add additional properties to our modifier group by going back to the plus button and let's say we want to animate the opacity. Right now, any letters that fall inside of the dark blue area are at 100% opacity, while the further they are away, the closer to zero they get. We can also invert this value. So let's say, for example, we want the letters inside the dark blue area to be at 0% and everything outside of it to start um, going between 0 and 100%. What we can do is we can set our opacity to 0 and hit the invert toggle. Now you can see that this text range both affects the opacity and the position. And we can do this with any of these other properties as well. Now I'm gonna remove our opacity and let's go ahead and explore some additional range options that we have in this range option flyout. By default, the text modifier range is gonna affect characters. So in this case, we're affecting each individual letter by the range. We can also change the mode that we have, uh, and this is pretty niche, so you don't really need to worry about this too much, but this involves two ranges that cross over that have the same modifier. So let's say we have two different ranges and both ranges affect the position. What's going to happen when those two ranges overlap? Are we going to add those values, subtract them, multiply them, uh, so on and so forth? We can also affect the strength, so we can turn it down or turn it back up to 100. The range type allows us to change the numerical values down here. So instead of a percentage, we can also do an index, which now takes into account the amount of letters. So right now our range is set to one, so it's only gonna affect one letter at a time. But if we set it to, let's say 13, and we change this to 13, now all of the different letters are being accounted for. And we would go down to 12 if we wanted to leave out one letter, or 11 if we wanted to leave out two, so on and so forth. The next option is the fall off interpolation. Right now it's set to linear, but we can change it to cubic. And you can see by the way that we change this curve, uh, the interpolation curve that also changes how the fall off is actually affected. Up to this point, we've only been modifying specific characters, but we can do this same effect with individual words. Once we change the text modifier range to affect words, now when we move the offset, you can see that it's not individual letters moving, but it's entire words. 
Additionally, we can do this with lines. So if you have multiple lines of text that you want to affect, in this case, once you switch it to lines, you can see that once the range falls into another line, the entire line of text is affected. There's a few more options in the panel that we can explore. The first is this name bar. This obviously is where we can change the name. So instead of modifier group one, we can call this position modifier. The next is this eye toggle, and this will toggle the view of our modifier on and off. Below that, we also have the run selection. In this case, I've broken our text into three different runs. We have run one, which is welcome, run two, which is user, and run three, which is to your profile. If I wanna apply this modifier to a specific run, I can use this drop down here next to run, and I can either apply it to all runs, run one, two, or three. In this case, I'll assign the modifier to run two, and when I toggle the eye off, you'll notice that when I move the offset, that only user is affected, because user is the only thing that falls into run two. Now you may find yourself in a situation where these blue bars that are showing you your range are actually getting in the way. Well, you can go up to the view options menu and turn off the modifier range. And that way those blue bars won't be filled in, but you'll still have these little bars here that will give you an idea of where your range is actually at. You'll notice that while we're in animate mode, we can animate lots of these different properties that are in our modifier, such as the position, the weight, and even the range values that we have selected.